Good morning, guys. I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to a new day that God has blessed us to see. Today, I will be sharing with you guys my devotional. I hope that your day is coming along well, and I pray that you will be blessed and you will be encouraged um, with this message. But as always, let us bow our heads down and let us pray. In Jesus' name, Father God, we thank you for a brand new day, God. We thank you for opening up our eyes. Thank you, Lord, for breathing within us. Thank you for our family, our friends, and our loved ones, oh God. Father, as I come before you, God, I ask, oh God, that may you cleanse every part of our beings, God, and may you fill us up, oh God, with your spirit. Father God, I ask that you will fill our hearts with praise, God. Um, and we ask that, Lord Almighty, that as we go forth into this day, that we will seek your face. We thank you for what you have in store for this time. May we not leave your presence the same way that we have entered, God, but we ask, Lord, that we will be able to apply that in which we will learn today in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we invite you. We ask that you will search our hearts and we ask that you will have your way in this time. Father, we just want to say thank you. We give you all the glory and we give you all the honor for hearing this of our of our prayer in jesus name amen so our devotional is taken from philippians 2 verses 7 which reads he took the humble position the way up is down and the devotional goes like this jerusalem was surrounded by walls and one of the ways into it was through valley gate when nehemiah rebuilt the walls we are told the people rebuilt valley gate Nehemiah 3 verses 13. In the Christian life, there has to be a place for both mountaintop experiences and valley experiences. Let's take another look at a well-known scripture. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. That's elevation. They shall run and not be weary. That's acceleration and they shall walk and not faint that's duration isaiah 40 verses 31 and when you don't have the strength to do any of these things paul says having done all stand ephesians 6 verses 13 there's a season in your life for all these experiences and you must embrace it the bible says jesus took the humble position Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor. Philippians 2 verses 7 through 9. Luke records that Jesus took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. Luke 24 verses 30. Blessed and broken. That's still God's pattern. Why? So you can handle his blessings and remain humble. You're in trouble when you're more conscious of your image than of your need for God. That's why he allows you to walk through situations that bring you to the place of utter dependence on him. You have to be taken, blessed, and broken before you can be given away in service to others. In God's kingdom, the way up is down. Glory be to God. Um... So right now, we are going to be taking a look at some of the key points that we can take away from this time. I'm going to give you guys six key points that um, you can apply to your life. And definitely feel free to also um, write down what you took away from this devotional. So the first thing that I took away was where you are currently in your life is for a purpose. And that God is humbling you so that when you get to the promised land, you won't think you got there by yourself. You know, there are many of us that are in the valley right now. We are trusting God for so many things. And because we do not see our miracle, we have began to lose hope. We are losing hope and we are not fixing our eyes on Jesus. We are focusing on our circumstance. So I'm here to tell you today that 
where you are currently placed is for a purpose. You may not understand it. People may criticize you and wonder what are you doing with your life. But continue to fix your eyes on Jesus and know that he is preparing you for the promise. He is preparing you for the assignment and that he has not forgotten you. A second thing that I took away from this time is that you may be in the valley right now, but cling unto God. There is so much that God is trying to teach you about yourself, about himself, and also your assignment. You know, before anything, um, before your purpose is revealed, you have to go through certain things, you know. You know, I always look at it from this perspective. Before a mother gives birth to a child, she has contractions, and the contractions are necessary. Sometimes we don't want to go through certain things. We just want the promise. We want um, the miracle. But a lot of times when you don't go through things, you don't learn to appreciate you know, the miracle and the blessing that God gives you, you take it for granted. So understand that you may be in the valley right now, but God is preparing you. He's teaching you a lot about himself, things that you never knew. Um, and he is not done with you. So continue to cling on to him, continue to open up his word and focus on him. Do not become distracted. Do not run away from the presence of God because you feel like you have been trusting God for years and you see him answering other people's prayers and you feel like God um, has overlooked you. But understand that God is preparing you even in the valley. Um, the third thing that I took away from this time is that in this journey with God, we have to have a mountaintop and a valley experience if you can't praise god in the valley what will you do when you get to the mountain top this journey is not easy but god is preparing you and you have to go through the process in order for you to get to the promised land you know a lot of times when we're going through things you know it's just so hard you know it's just so difficult like god why do i have to keep going through things but one thing i've learned in life is that Sometimes the things that you think you have mastered, you have not mastered. And God will continue to teach you that very thing. You know, it's an ongoing process and it's a journey. There's no such thing as I, I have arrived on this journey as a, as a believer. But God is teaching me something all the time. You know, when we look at James 1 verses 12, we are reminded that blessed is the one who perseveres. For, you know, having stood the test, he shall receive the crown that the Lord has for those who seek him and trust him. So it's very important that we continue to focus on God and not lose sight of him, even in the valley that he is preparing us. And though this journey is not easy, that he is with us and he will never leave us nor forsake us. Do not look at everything that is going on around you. Do not become distracted by other people's blessing and feel like God is not um, looking out for you. But understand that God is preparing you. Sometimes your season of being in the valley may be longer than others. You know, but God is doing a work in you. He is focusing on you. He's focusing on the work that he needs to do on you. So in the same way, you need to focus on him. You know, I look at it from this perspective, even as I'm speaking to you guys, this just came to my mind. Um, when we look at the instance of a potter, you know, God is the potter and we are the clay. If a potter um, is, you know, building and shaping us and molding us, if he removes his finger or he, you know, um, touches something, he can mess up what he is building. But we serve a God who is the greatest potter. That even what we look at as a mistake, God can use it for his glory. So understand that you may be in the valley right now, but God hasn't forgotten you. The fourth thing that I took away from this time was that in every season, you must learn to depend on God, not your own strength. You know, when you're going through the valley is when you learn to really depend on God. You know, when you are on the mountaintop and things are going well for you, you tend to forget God. You you feel like you don't need God anymore. You don't praise God as much as you used to. You don't take the time to even 
even pray or even open up your word. But when you are going through the most difficult seasons of life, you learn to really kneel down and humble yourself in the presence of God and allow him to do what he needs to do. So it's very important that in every given season that we learn to depend on God and not to lean on our own understanding, but understand that God is with us and he is present with us even in the midst of the storm, that he is still God. We must learn to be still and know that he is God. Psalm 46 verses 10. It is very, very important. Um, The fifth thing that I took away from this time is that you may feel broken, but God is picking up the pieces and making you whole in him. You know, we serve a God that transforms. We serve a God that what looks like a mistake, what looks like broken pieces that um, the world cannot fix, he can fix. You know, so continue to seek God. You may feel hurt, broken. Just so many things that you're going through and you just don't understand. You know, you speak to people and they don't understand. They cannot relate to you. They're just confused. Understand that certain seasons are just going to be you and God. It's not going to be anyone else. But you need to learn to depend on him and to focus on him. He will bring people along the journey to help you grow. But at all times, you must learn to still fix your eyes on Jesus. Um, The final thing that I took away from this time is that you are blessed even in the midst of your brokenness. God hasn't forgotten you, but rather he is working in you. He is humbling you for um, what he has called you to do. Understand that you are here for a purpose and you are not here by coincidence. Um, but God has called you for greatness. You are a pillar of greatness. So continue to seek God, you know. Um, and the last Bible verse that I'm going to let us take a look at is Mark 10 verses 45. And it reads, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And this is reminding us about Jesus. You know, Jesus came to do the work that God had called him to do. You know, he did not come that he will be served, but rather um, to serve us. And he died on the cross because of us. One thing that we see, you know, throughout the Bible is that Jesus humbled himself. He was very compassionate when he came across people. He did not condemn them. He loved them. He was relational. He was intentional. He listened to them and um, he was just present. And in the same way, God is present for you. I don't know what you're going through. It might be very difficult. You may feel like you've been in the valley for so many years and God is not listening to you and you feel like you are, you know, just going to run away from the presence of God and you just want to go astray. But I'm here to remind you today that continue to cling on to God. Continue to open up his word. Do not lose hope in him. For he still has a purpose for you. As long as you are alive, he has a purpose. And it is only the living that can praise God. And today, if God has um, breathed within you and you are alive and you can see, no matter what you're going through, know that God is present with you he is for you and he is not against you so that is the encouragement the word that i have for you guys today continue to humble yourself and allow god to humble you and continue to seek his face and know that god has not forgotten you you have to go through the valley experiences but you will also go through the mountaintop experiences for god's kingdom and for god's glory so let us bow our heads down and let us pray in jesus name father god i thank you i thank you father lord for this time to commune in your presence god we thank you that today you are teaching us that you are humbling us oh god it may seem like we have been in the valley for way too long oh god but father lord you are preparing us oh god for our purpose god and sometimes the process is not easy before we get to the promised land but lord i thank you that you alone are god and you give us strength oh god even when we are weary when it looks like we are about to faint god father lord help us to fix our eyes on you and help us oh god to be still and know that 
you are God. Father, we just want to say thank you. We exalt you, Lord, and we magnify you. We commit this day into your hands, God. May we continue to reach out our hands unto you. May we um, continue to um, spend time in your word and to meditate on your truth, God. Father, Lord, we ask that you remove any form of distractions that will keep us, oh God, from sitting at your feet, God. We thank you that you have so much to um, teach us and so much that you are trying to tell us in this season. And though you are trying to get our attention, sometimes we can become very distracted by so many things, God. But Father Lord, as we come before you, we ask, oh God, for your um, Holy Spirit to help us and to be with us as we go forth into the day. Father Lord, may we be a blessing unto those that we encounter, God, and may our lives, oh God, um, bring hope to this dark world. And we thank you that we have experienced your light, God. And we pray that as we go forth into the day, Lord, that we will speak life, oh God, and we will not lose hope, oh God, because we know that hope is found in you and our hope is in you and our hope does not disappoint because you are with us, Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory and we give you all the honor. Until next time, God, um, may your hands be upon us, oh God. May you protect us. May you order us, oh God. Um, and may you open up doors where no man can shut. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for hearing this of our prayer in jesus name that i've asked this and prayed with thanksgiving amen thank you so much for stopping by my channel may god bless you and i pray that you will have a wonderful day until next time stay blessed and stay rooted in christ and always remember that jesus loves you bye